If you're in search of a breath of fresh air for your 2021 or newer 2.3 liter Bronco, this AFB Momentum GT cold air intake with the ProDry S filter in black will be a great mod to check out. This will not only help out with airflow, but with filtration if you're looking to keep the air going into your motor cleaner with a high quality filter. Now speaking of the filter, if you're tired of replacing your factory one and want a system that's going to be lower maintenance while filtering better, then this is going to be a great pick. Now I'd also recommend this to the Bronco owner who wants a little more protection to the filter inside of their engine bay compared to the heat shield options that we have available, especially if they're taking their truck off road and in wetter climates. Now, I'd also like to mention right up front that this will not be carb certified, so I would keep that in mind when you are shopping around. Now, this will get rid of most of that restriction that your factory intake had, outflowing it by 27% with a dyno tuned and proven 5 horsepower gain and 8 foot pound of torque gain. The star of the show here is going to be the Pro Dry S filter, which will not only help out with the additional airflow with a 99.2% filtration efficiency, but will also be washable and reusable so you don't have to worry about replacing it every couple thousand miles or so like the factory one. And the housing here will also have some cool features as well as the intake tube with an auxiliary air inlet for increased airflow and a clear sight window up on top of the housing so you can keep an eye on your filter for maintenance without having to disassemble the entire thing. The system will also noticeably increase the turbo noise as well for a sporty feel to the Bronco while offering a better look underneath the hood with quality and well-fitting components. Now getting into the construction and the breakdown of this kit, starting off with the filter here, this will be AFE's non-oiled filter, which will have a multiple synthetic layer media and will be one of the easiest to maintain out of their entire lineup. This will also include a one-piece roto-molded sealed housing made of a heat-resistant cross-linked polyphylene material, so you can ensure that this is going to remain heat-soak resistant and incredibly durable underneath the hood. Now same goes for the CAD design intake tube, and another call out here is that this thing is going to be big and unobstructed, which is really going to streamline that airflow. And not to mention, this will have all these stainless steel clamps, silicone couplers, and the fittings to uh, offer a reliable and straightforward installation. Now this will be more of a premium choice at roughly $500 when it comes to talking about price. I will say is that you are getting excellent quality with durable materials that you can count on while getting some pretty solid gains out of this system. Now other options available on the page may not come with all the bells and whistles that you see here like the closed box design, the clear window up at the top, or even a dry filter that's going to require that less maintenance than an oiled filter. Now, I think if you have the extra cash to spend on a high quality system to get the most out of your intake, then this is going to be a great choice to pick. Now, install here will be a one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, taking you roughly 45 minutes to get the job done with some basic hand tools. At this point, we can head over to the shop and check out a detailed breakdown of that install and how to get this onto your Bronco at home. So that's gonna wrap it up for me. Let's go ahead and get into it. The tools you'll need for this project are a quarter inch drive ratchet, a short extension, a seven, an eight, and a 10 millimeter socket, a 20 millimeter socket or an adjustable wrench, a soft trim removal tool, a pair of pliers, and a push pin removal tool. Hi everyone, today we're installing a cold air intake on our Bronco, so let's get started with the uninstall of the stock box first. Before we get started with this, first thing I wanna let you know is you will need to purchase a new crankcase ventilation hose. The one that's on your vehicle as stock is not serviceable, so in order to get it off, we are going to have to basically destroy the end fittings on our PCV valve. So before you get started on this, make sure that you've got a replacement hose already in place. And now we can go ahead and get started with the uninstall. First thing we're going to do is remove this inlet tube here for our air box. And to do that, we're going to need a trim removal tool or a small flathead screwdriver. We're going to fit this down underneath the top portion of our push pin, lift that up to unlock it then lift the whole thing out. Once we've got it out, lift up on the box itself, unsnap it from the inlet box, and get it out of the way. So next we're gonna disconnect and remove this vent hose right here to get it out of the way and prevent any damage while we're taking out the rest of the equipment. So to do this, we've got two ears, one here and one on the other side here, and then you're gonna need to push those towards the outside of the fitting and then separate this piece right here where you're gonna pull that out and that'll disconnect the hose. So we're gonna reach in, push the ears out, 
and then use a small flathead screwdriver to go ahead and pry that out. Once you've got it disconnected, we can swing that out of the way and disconnect the other end. So the other end of this hose that we're gonna be disconnecting is just about in the center of the vehicle. It's got another green fitting on it. Same procedure as before, lift up on the ears and use your small flathead screwdriver to pry that up and get it disconnected. Now, once we've got that disconnected, we're gonna use our trim removal tool and get right underneath here where this push pin is at and go ahead and just lift that up and get it out of the way. Now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this coolant hose here from our air box using our trim removal tool. Just get behind it and pry that out. Now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect. We're loosening up the clamp here at the end of our hose to our air box using our seven millimeter socket and a long extension. Now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our air intake sensor. And to do this, we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver to push in on the release lever because you can't get your finger in here. So we're just going to push in on the release lever and pull it right out. Now we can remove the retaining bolt here on the side of the air box from the inner fender using our eight millimeter socket. And now we can go ahead and disconnect our hose here from the clamp that we loosened earlier by simply pulling it back and away from the tube. Now once we've got that done, we can go ahead and lift the air box out. So we'll just grab a hold of our air box, lift it up, and we're gonna use our trim removal tool here to disconnect the wiring harness from the box and then get it out of the car. Now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our bypass valve here and then remove the two retaining pins that hold the wiring harness to the bypass valve. Now to do this, what we're gonna do is lift up on this white locking tab here and then once you've got it all the way out, go ahead and push down on the end of it and simply pull out your connector. Once we've got that done, We'll use our re trim removal tool again, and very carefully, because this is all plastic, we'll go ahead and remove these retaining clips. And you may need to use your small flathead screwdriver to help push it out from the backside. Now we're gonna loosen up this clamp here at the top, going down to our turbo, using our seven millimeter socket. All right, now we're gonna remove this bypass clamp and hose from the tube down below. And to do that, you're gonna need a pair of pliers to squeeze this together. So we'll go ahead and squeeze our clamp together. Once you've got it together, go ahead and lift it up. And now we can go ahead and remove the hose from the fitting. So to remove the first one, you see this green clip here, and it's got two ears down at the bottom, one on one side, one on the other. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pull those to the outside of the hose and lift that clip out of the way. Once we've got that out of the way, you should be able to use just your finger to compress the clip at the bottom, but because ours is brand new and never been touched, it's pretty tight. So we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver on the bottom of this clip here to push up on the release tab and then pull our line away. Now to release the second line, we've got a green button here and one on the opposite side. So we're just gonna push those two towards the inside and simply pull out the line. All right, now we've gotta just loosen up the clamp here at the bottom of our bypass tube using our seven millimeter socket. All right, now we're gonna disconnect our PCV hose. And remember, we said earlier, do not attempt this until you have a replacement hose because we are going to have to destroy the fittings that will not lock in place anymore. So we're gonna use a pair of diagonal cutters here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this clip right here this, at this opening on both sides to release the locking tab so that we can go ahead and lift this out of the way. And like I said, there's one on this side and there's one on the other side. So let's go ahead and get those cut. All right, now that we've got this disconnected, we can go ahead and pull this off here. And we'll use our screwdriver to just kind of pry it up over the ring. 
Now we've got one more bolt to remove right here in front on this bypass tube here. So we're going to use our eight millimeter socket to get that out. Now we can disconnect our bypass tube from the hose down below. Now we'll disconnect it from the top as well. And then go ahead and remove that tube. All right, now our next clamp that we have to loosen up, we can't get the camera in here to see it. I can't even see it when I'm trying to put the socket on it. What you're gonna do is it's gonna be this valve here right on the side of the turbo. And you've got this center stud shaft right here. It's gonna be pretty much directly in line with that. Now you're also gonna need a swivel joint on your socket and your extension here to be able to get in there because of this pipe that's on your air conditioning compressor. So we're gonna go ahead and slide our seven millimeter socket in and you'll have to feel with it and get your, get your socket on it that way and then go ahead and loosen that up. All right, once you've got it loose, then you can go ahead and start pulling it out. Now you will have to be a little careful because we still have our crankcase ventilation line attached to this box. So you'll just have to twist it around to get it all out. Now we're ready to install our new air box. First thing we're gonna do is install this included rubber isolator where the bolt from the original one came out and then we'll attach the box to the isolator. So we're just gonna screw this isolator in to the same spot that the original bolt came out on the inner fender well here. And once we've got that in place, then we'll go ahead and set our box in, into place. So you wanna make sure that these two studs on the bottom of the air box fit into the two grommets that are on the frame down here in the engine compartment. If you look down and you see that you're missing one or both of the rubber grommets, you'll need to remove them from the original air box, put them into the frame, and that way we can put our new box in and set the studs into those grommets. Now, once you've got it into place, you go ahead and use the included bolt through the air box into the isolator, and then using a 10 millimeter socket, we'll tighten it down. All right, now we'll go ahead and tighten down our 10 millimeter bolt here with our 10 millimeter socket. And then using the original push pin that we removed from the front of our inlet tube, we'll just go ahead and secure that back to the grill cover. Now we can install our air filter. So now all we have to do is slide our air filter into the air box making sure that the small tabs on the inner side of the filter go to the inside of the air box. That will lock it into place. All right, now we're gonna put our coupler onto the turbo. We're gonna put the small end to the actual turbo. So we'll put a clamp over the coupling and then slide the coupling onto the turbo, make sure that it's all the way in. And then using our eight millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and tighten that down. And then we'll go ahead and slide the other clamp over the end, leaving it loose, of course, until we get everything hooked up. Now we've got some things to assemble on our air inlet tube for our bypass hoses and our PCV hoses and our intake sensor grommet. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and put together these bypass hose fittings into the oblong grommet here. Now you'll notice that this grommet is set up to where it's got a wide end and a, and a narrow end, and that'll fit perfectly into this opening here. So to do this, we're just gonna go insert this double fitting here into the grommet first. Now you wanna make sure that this seats in there correctly. If it's incorrectly, this fitting should fit perfectly level with the grommet itself. And once you've got that done, then we can go ahead and insert it into the tube. So we just slide the long tube here into the inlet and then work our grommet around, making sure that it seats properly and firmly into the tube. Now you may want to use something like a trim removal tool to help push the grommet in to get it seated, uh, or you can use a flathead screwdriver, but I do caution if you use a flathead screwdriver, you do need to be careful to not cut the grommet. All right, once you've got that seated in there securely, now we'll go ahead and install our vent hose fittings. To do that, we're just gonna screw them into the top, into the brass fitting here. And there's another one down here. Now you'll want to use a 20 millimeter socket or an adjustable wrench 
to go ahead and tighten that down. Now they don't have to be overly tight. And you will notice also that there are some threads still showing. That's perfectly fine. Now we'll go ahead and install the grommet for the air temperature sensor and the plastic fitting to hold it into place. So you go ahead and slide your grommet into the hole here, making sure that it's fully seated. And then we'll put our plastic fitting. And what you want to do is make sure that the arrow that is on this fitting here is towards the top and the little stop is towards the inside of the tube. Now it's also a good idea, put some sort of lubricant on the outside edge of this plastic fitting here to help ease it into the grommet. Now, once we've got that done, we can go ahead and install our intake sensor into the fitting. Now, here's our in intake air sensor. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this about a quarter of a turn counterclockwise, and then we can slide it out. Now, you want to be careful not to damage it. So now we'll just slide this into our new fitting, turn it a quarter turn clockwise till it's just past this little locking tab here. And you'll see that that tab on the sensor is actually pointing in the direction of the airflow for our tube. And that's exactly what we want. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and insert our inlet tube to the turbo at this fitting here, and then we'll insert it into the air filter on the other end. So we'll just feed this down, insert that into the coupler on the turbo. Now we'll insert it into our air filter. And now we can tighten up the clamps using our eight millimeter socket. We'll tighten down our top clamp first. Now we'll get the one at the coupling down on the turbo. Now it's a little tough to see this with all the tubes and hoses and everything else here, but you know where it's at right on the, on the connected to the turbo. So we'll go ahead and tighten that down again using our eight millimeter socket. Now we'll install our CAC inlet tube. So we'll put that behind our vapor lines, insert it into the bottom hose. Now it is a little tough to get a good camera angle on here, but you'll definitely see the hose down here below. Just work it in until it seats all the way to the lip. Then we'll go ahead and attach it at the top. Now we'll reinstall our bolt to hold it to the bracket. We'll tighten it down with our eight millimeter socket. Now we'll tighten the clamp down in front of the engine here with our seven millimeter socket. And again, it's a little tough to see with everything else in the way. And we'll tighten down the upper clamp. And we'll reattach our bypass hose and again, because of all the interference with all the other hoses, it's a little tough to see, but you'll know where it goes. Once you get that on, you can go ahead and use your pliers, go ahead and squeeze that spring clamp and slide it down over the fitting. Now we can go ahead and hook up our vent hoses here to the CAC tube. Make sure you push down on the green locking tab on the one and then insert the other one until it snaps into place. Give it a little tug, make sure it's locked in and we've got those hoses all connected. Reconnect our air temperature sensor harness. Now we'll hook up our bypass valve sensor and then re-secure the wiring harness back to the tube. And right, now we'll reconnect our vent hoses, push them down, make sure you lock them in. Get the one on top of the engine. And then down at the bottom. Give it a little tug, make sure it's locked in. Now, once you've got your vent hoses, your installation is now complete. And that wraps up our review and install of the AFE Momentum GT cold air intake with Pro Dry S filter in black for your 21 to 22 2.3 liter Bronco. Thanks for watching, and remember, for all things Bronco, keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.